Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and this is Top 5. It's the only weekly Top 5 show in snowboarding that you currently care about. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the top five worst kinds of one-night stands you can have in a shred town. That's right, you and the boys, or you and the girls, are heading out to go get your one week of the year snowboarding anti-sobriety shred on. And you're going to party, and you're going to make questionable decisions, and these might be the top five worst things you'll bring home from the bar when you go to party. So let's dive right... Oh. Hey. Oh. Shit, somebody's here. Where the fuck is he off to? All right, I'm Randy, the one night stand guy. So I suppose we should probably, probably get right into this list. I mean, I've had plenty of one night stands and I mean, I was supposed to be up with a hot little number for the Steel Panther concert, but they canceled, and then, you know, I was supposed to have tickets to Judas Priest, and then, you know, one of them basically died on stage, so here I am, you know, eastbound down, loaded up on trucker speed, I'm gonna do what they say can't be done, I got a long way to go and a short time to get there, me and Burt Reynolds' ashes will be gone. Sorry, where was I? Zima. Love this stuff. Oh, God. Damn. Oh, that got some kick. Straight out of 93. All right, let's get into this. Number five, snow carnies. You don't want to sleep with them because you're probably going to get crabs or worse, the clap, or really worse, herpes. And let me tell you about herpes. I have a case of intergalactic space herpes. What is it? <laughs> Gnarly. You don't want to hook up with these goddamn snow carnies. After you hook up with them and you boot them out of your t Airbnb and whatnot, they're going to be scanning your ticket in the lift line and then they want to make idle chit chat with you and you're over there like, oh shit, I never saw that cold sore on their face. And now you're like, oh man, they went down harder on me than a fat kid in an all you can eat buffet. <sighs> mm, you gotta watch it, man. You don't, you don't want the herp, the clap, the drip, the poops, or the crabs. Though you can eat the crabs. Crab meat is good. You can make some crab rangoons out of them. Anyways, yeah, snow carnies. Don't, don't sleep with them. Let's move on. Number four, longtime locals. Because once you do that, words out that you put out. If you put out... All them dudes in the dude soup are going to be grinding up on you, ladies. And, well, you know, if you're looking for a little Vienna sausage to park in your buns, I mean, more power to you, but the same thing can be said, like, you know, you're hooking up with a long-time girl. I mean, there's a reason she's single in a shred town. You won't want any of that. I can tell you all about that. Me and Dolores May. That was awful. So downright awful. Still not over that. I mean, that was worse than the ending of Game of Thrones. Or at least so I'm told. I don't know anything about Game of Thrones. The only Game of Thrones I play is when I'm at the truck stop in Iowa City, Iowa, and I'm just going from stall to stall shitting myself. Man. Cleanest fucking rest stops I've ever been, man. And no one tried to get me to give them an old rub and tug in the parking lot. Number three, drug dealers. I know a fair share about these things, you know, like eastbound down, loaded up with trucker speed, smuggling them drugs like they said couldn't be done. Oh, wait, wait, no, sorry. My, my single's not out yet on the SoundClouds yet, but it's coming, it's coming. It's very Jerry Reed inspired, if you will. But yeah, back to back to one night stands. You do not want to have one night stand with a drug dealer. One, you ain't gonna get any fun time because they're friggin' pagers going off all the time, you know, and they can try to slang whatever drugs they got. Plus two, you know, you think you're gonna do some cocaine and have some really raucous sex, but the truth is you're probably snorting baby laxatives and shitting yourselves. Seriously, you guys are gonna go to pound town together and then wake up in a pile of your own poopy. Or worse, you're going to be snorting some fentanyl. 
I don't fuck with that fentanyl, man. No, no, man. I'm, I'm an Oxycontin kind of guy. I'd like to boof it, because when I boof it, it's free. But still, you don't want to be hooking up with no drug dealer, because the next thing you know, ATF's kicking in the door, and you find yourself handcuffed to a toilet, and you got a nightstick three quarters of a foot up your ass, and they're telling you to spread them. I mean, I'm not saying like I know from personal experience, but I might know from personal experience. Anyways, just don't do it because it's incarceration by association, and you know, you know, you don't want to be all of that broke down palace bullshit. You know, you get what I'm saying here? Yeah, you know what I mean. Number two, hobosexuals. Now you might be saying to yourself, but wait, Randy. I'm on vacation. I'm leaving. I don't have to worry about nothing. You go home or bring this thing home with you. It knows it's got a free meal ticket. It might try to knock you up or get knocked up or both. I don't know how these things work. I did not take the sexual education. Nope. I learned everything I need to know about reproducing from the back of VHS tapes in the back of the Blockbuster. That's right. They had Boom Boom Room Selection. Though it really wasn't Blockbuster, it was more called Cockbusters. But it doesn't matter. Anyways, you don't want to hook up with a homosexual. And here's why. You might be on vacation and think that, oh, I'm going back to my life and I'm never going to see him. But here's the thing. They're going to face stalk you and Instagram stalk you and TikTok you and all that stuff. You know, TikTok, twick twock, I don't know, stick their finger in your butthole and stuff like that. But what they're going to do is they're going to find you. And then one day they're going to show up on your doorstep and be like, hey, I need a place to stay. I'm just here visiting. And then, you know, nine months later, they're still there. And, you know, they change your Netflix password and all your selection and shit and steal your credit card and then run off to Tijuana for something about working with a donkey show with Kinky Kelly and the Sexy Stud. I don't even know what that means. Man, that show lies to you, too. Let me tell you all about Kinky Kelly. She's a real ass. But anyways... You don't need that in your life, so don't be hooking up with no hobosexuals. You gotta look for the signs of the hobosexual. If they tell you that you can go back to their place, but you gotta be out real early because they're getting ready to move, hobosexual. If they keep asking how many bathrooms you have in your house, not at your vacation Airbnb, your second home or whatever, but your actual house, they're a hobosexual. And if you do have a second home, Change your locks immediately afterwards and all your key codes because they got them and they're getting in and they're going to become vagrants and they're going to live in there and they're going to shit in your shoes. I know that they do this because every morning I wake up and they're shit in my shoes and I live alone in a dumpster. It's weird. Anyways, let's move on. Honorable mentions, all great options, but just barely didn't make it on this list. Ski instructors, they need your validation. Don't give it to them. We're trying to cripple them and bring them down a peg or two. I mean, what's the difference between God and the ski instructor? God doesn't think he's a ski instructor. Now, you think that going into the bedroom is going to be good? They got a God complex, and then they're going to whip out all three and a half inches of fury on you or show you their big old gaping axe wound, and you're going to be like, I don't want none of that. And then, you know, you're going to yell into it, and it's going to be like, I don't want none of that echoing back at you. And, oh, man, this is awful. No, I digress. Anyways, you know, so... Lonely divorcees or suburban victims. You can usually spot these people because the world is beating them down. They don't walk upright, they shuffle their feet, and they breathe through their mouths. They also might be zombies. I don't really know. Favorite things to talk about or whatever or stupid reality show like I've married a bachelorette rock star of love survivor or some shit like that. I, I don't know. Maybe they're about Spirit and Britney. I don't know. I don't I don't. I don't have the cables. I don't know what these people watch, but they love cable television. I probably think the Big Bang Theory is good. Man, fucking idiots. D-list celebrities or pros. You know, like local celebrities or local pros. You know, like YouTube influencers. I don't know. Wait, I'm on YouTube. I have influence. If I try to hit on you in a bar, run the other way. I got crabs, too. I live in staff housing. No, wait, I just have a staph infection. That's dead. Anyway, it doesn't matter. All great honorable mentions, but just barely didn't make it on this list. And the number one worst kind of one-night stand you can have in a shred town is van lifers. First off, their house is on wheels. Now, basically, they're going to kidnap you. And you, you say, oh, no, that's not going to happen. Bullshit. They're going to kidnap you, and they're going to steal your kidneys. Look at this. Look at this scar. They took my freaking kidneys. I got sawdust and a dead hamster in there now. 
Zima's the only thing keeping me alive. It's the only thing giving me the dialysis I need. You know, you don't want to go home with a van lifer. They're going to kidnap you. You're going to wake up on some dirt road. I don't know. And if they're influencers, oh, God, it's even worse. Then you got Dog the Bounty Hunter with that flaming mullet chasing you all over the place. There's only room in your life for one mullet, and that's from this guy here, Randy, the one-night stand guy. Anyways, avoid van lifers. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Averin's, Averin, Averin's come. I was not here. You never saw me. I do not exist. I am a fragment of his imagination. Why does it smell like Zima? Truck driver ass. Trucker speed. And questionable. Randy. Randy was here. That bastard. Anyways. This has been the top five worst kinds of one night stands you could make in a shred town. Do you agree with this list? Do you disagree with this list? Did Randy forget something on this list? Leave him a comment in the comments down below. Anyways, if you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what Randy's doing around here, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and well, I gotta go take care of Randy because somebody clearly let him in the state again. And I'll see you in another video. Oh, God, that tastes like 1993. Ugh. I'm serious, I don't exist.